More wheelie or less wheelie? Look at that ice. Weird flex, but okay. <laughs> What's up everybody? Out here today at HRDHQ. I'm actually out here with Ken and the crew working on 2020 plans. Like what are all those cool things we're gonna do in 2020? Are we gonna do Kazi World Tour again? Are we going to do another Kana video? So we're working on all that here, putting together the ideas, but Ken's got a new toy he wanted to show me and show you guys. So here's one of Ken's new toys. But first let's look at a few other things. So we've got still one of my favorite cars just because old days. The original Jim Kind of three car. <laughs> this thing, RS200. Oh, love this thing. <laughs> the RS from Rallycross. I love this car in Jim Kind of nine. <laughs> And then uh, Ken with the bigger grand design than ours. And, uh, and Ken with his new toy. Yeah, wishing I was outside because the weather's supposed to be dumping the next couple days and I have to leave. Sorry I made you do work for the past couple days. <laughs> it's good work. So this is new. And by the way, it's really cute that you wore a matching uh, sweatshirt oh, today. Yeah, that was really so, But this is actually the Climb Kana 2 shirt that matches that. But it matches your sled too, so. Yeah. Very much coincidence. So what's up with the new sled? Brand new toy, just got this from ski -Doo. It's the uh, Summit X with the expert package. All right, so I'm a bit of a noob when it comes to sleds. I've only ridden them twice. And uh, the second time resulted in frostbite because I was actually scouting for Gymkhana 10 with Pierre Vickberg. And I had no idea what minus 30 and 65 miles an hour would do to my face. Um, but it was fun. Uh, but Ken, you obviously know a lot more about this. Were you doing anything fun with the sled? Like he something? made me jump it, which was cool. <laughs> which was cool. A little scary, but cool. So, but when it comes to Ken and sleds, honestly, I mean, one of my favorite things was watching Ken do donuts with a sled on the back of the F450, but when it actually comes oh, yeah. to riding. So maybe that's a good place to start. That's Carl Custer's place up in uh, British Columbia. We had the F450 with the sled deck on top, two uh, ski doos on there. And it was a, just a nice morning up there and the nice sheet of ice out there. And that thing's heavy, it's huge. How much do one of these weigh? Uh, each one weighs about 400 pounds. So. so you had about 800 pounds over the back of it, which is about probably the weight yeah. of a diesel engine. Yeah, so you had like the weight of an engine in the back. And street tires. They're Toyo tires, semi truck, you know, road tires. On like so. a 22 inch Alcoa. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah. It's not really intended to get grip on, on ice trying to do donuts, but it's a funny little video. <laughs> Back to sleds. Yeah. Obviously there's lots of different kinds of sleds. I'm showing my noobness here, but what is this one for? It looks long. There's sleds for doing all sorts of different things in the snow from basic trail riding where someone owns one and is driving into town to stuff that climbs mountains and deep powder and this being that end of it. So we do a lot of backcountry snowmobiling here in Utah. And when I go up to Carl Cooster's place, which is called CKMP up in British Columbia. That's what we do up there. Go out into the back country, 
go explore, go find giant powder fields, climb mountains, go to glaciers, all that sort of thing. Speaking of Cooster and Pierre, isn't there like a Pierre video <laughs> that we haven't ever shown anyone? We went to Carl Cooster's place this year uh, in February, uh, and that's a perfect example. Great segue, Brian. Uh, perfect example of the type of riding that this sort of sled's built for. So this is ski Summit X with an expert package, which is intended for uh, backcountry snowmobiling and deep powder. So this video from Carl Kuster's place is a perfect example of exactly what this is designed for. Yeah, I wouldn't smoke it, but just kind of drop off it. That video was actually filmed with last year's sled, yes. right? Yes, that was the same size track, uh, very similar sled, but with a turbo on it. So this is a non-turbo, I'm going back to non-turbo. But you put the turbo on that one. Yeah. That was an aftermarket yeah, turbo an upgrade. aftermarket boondocker turbo. And the great thing about turbos is, like it has this turbo lag and turbo boost, and it's really fun to ride, but it actually makes it a bit more difficult to ride in real basic situations, carving through the trees and stuff like that. So I really enjoy doing wheelies up steep mountains, which the turbo is great for, but this sort of package and the non-turbo is better for like carving through difficult situations, trees and that sort of thing, which is I'm a little bit weak at and I want to get better at. So that's one of the reasons why I got this this year. This is a level of maturity I have not heard from my friend <laughs> in 15 years, which is I'm going to need a little less power so I can work on my skill set instead of just add more power, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> is this maturity coming with age that you're going to slow to go faster, right? right? Is that the idea? Slow well, down to go faster? Whatever I do, I want to continue to try and develop my skills at. I want to get better and better. And so I, I feel like there, I have a couple weaknesses in, in, in how I ride, and one of them really is confidently carving through trees. And, but part of that's been I've had a turbo on my sled, so I want... I want something that's a bit more consistent and controllable. And this package here also They've built a lot of things into it that work perfect for like the places that I ride. They've put a 54, 154 tunnel on a 165 track and put a very small snow flap in the back. So why did they do that? So you're saying that 
the tunnel is actually shorter yeah. than the previous gen on the same size track. Yeah, and what that does, it, it reduces a bit of cooling because this is all the cooling, but this whole part back here controls basically your grip and how much snow has moved, which also directly relates to how much horsepower drain is on the engine. So this package actually gets you basically more usable horsepower, moving more snow for the deep backcountry snow that we have here in Utah and what we go up and do in British Columbia. So it's, it's really an ideal, ideal thing for exactly the type of stuff that I like to ride. There's a lot of other changes like a, a smaller Carl Kuster designed seat. There's higher handlebars, a smaller grab bar. Explain the grab bar for people who've never used a sled because the first time I ever went like riding a snowmobile, I didn't realize I actually had to get off, like off the side of it to make it do things. Well, technically the main purpose of it is pulling it out of the snow. But if you are in a situation where you need to whip the thing around and turn around really quick, you can just use it to pull the sled over. And so the handlebars are a little smaller, narrower. It comes with these nice guards for getting through the trees and not getting your hand hit. Extruded sideboards are much more grippy and have a lot more open, basically, holes in there to, to get the snow out so that your foot is actually sitting on much more just sharp metal. So it's a high-tech Nerf bar. Cool. Basically. <laughs> just got it. <laughs> just trying to translate it to the other brap out there. And also on this is a, a redesigned spindle which is actually better for powder riding, helps basically the ski uh, angle when we're side hilling in deep powder on hills. Cool, I thought it was to do better jumps, but whatever. <laughs> of course, it always helps for that. I have a question which was answered before, but what does that do, short or long? You want a short boy or a long boy? <laughs> so basically it controls the droop, so more wheelie or less wheelie? Oh, so that's the fun switch. <laughs> oh, cool, you should have talked about that first. Also, ski -Doo makes some very nice accessories. They have this system on here that's called the Link System. So this is a pack that, uh, you know, I keep spare gloves in and goggles and snacks, all that sort of stuff. And of course, a shovel for digging ourselves out when we get buried. Buried meaning like when you flip over or, or get into too deep a powder and... Have you, have you gotten really badly buried? I know yeah. Butch has. Yeah. Butch actually fell in a creek last year. <laughs> fell in a creek that was like eight or nine feet deep. I remember looking at that and I was like, yeah, I don't think I want to get into snowmobiling. That looks like a lot of work. <laughs> we had to go down in, flip the sled over, build a basically a ramp to get it up and out of snow. Yeah, snowmobiling in the backcountry is no joke. Hey Ken, just a quick debate. How do you say that? I don't know, Brian, how do you say that word? <laughs> Is that an A or an I? I? When I see this word, I say skidoo. But I went to school at University of Vermont where we're close to Montreal, so I think maybe it's a French thing that they say skidoo. I pronounce that ski. I pronounce that ski too, but when it's put together, it's skidoo. Not my world. Comment below, skidoo, skidoo. I don't even know enough about this, but I like arguing with Ken, so it's good <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, you gonna do a burnout in this thing? I've done one burnout in here before, and it turned out to be terrible for the sled. Oh, really? That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, Surprising. The snow lubricates the whole track system, and if you don't have the snow, when things get heated up, they start melting and fusing together, which I, which we experienced here on top of. And F450. We do have some footage of that, so we should show that yeah, real yeah, quick. Yeah, of course. Everyone likes burnout footage. Yeah, burnout footage with some fire, of course. Because yeah. we were on, we actually put the track on a piece of plywood on top of the truck. <laughs> so, but. I did do a good burnout up at Carl Kuster's place when I was up there in 2018 with an old. Uh, F100, a 60s F100. So kind of similar body style to that one, where that one's a dent side. The 60s version of that, the F100, is a bump side. Same truck my wife has. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this one's got a bit more power in it. Yeah, no, this is a beautiful build. Carl had it built for his cousin-in-law, Chris Vose, and, and Chris had done some great work helping with Carl's dad, who was very, very sick. So Chris had, had done some... Uh, something great for the family, so Carl wanted to give something back to him. So, gave him this great truck, and uh, I just happened to be there when the truck was presented to Chris, 
And so they asked me to break to, it in. To for break them. it in. To break it in with a burnout <laughs> inside Carl's shop, uh, which absolutely smoked out the entire shop. And his basically his whole lodge that he keeps everybody in for CKMP is above the shop. So all the smoke filled the entire shop and then just permeated up into the whole lodge headquarters up up above. But yeah, it's a very cool truck, coyote engine, just a beautiful build. Cut to that footage. So Ken, one of the things about the Pierre video that I really liked was the fusion footage from the front. And I, I couldn't really tell, was it just a post mounted up to like here with like the camera like here? Yeah, so there was a mount put into this front metal bumper that held a, just a metal post that came up to about here and then it looks back. When you use a, either like a, you know, a normal hero camera or a fusion, it just gives a very cool view carving through the powder. It's wild because I feel like even just two years ago, you couldn't capture that angle. We like what, how hard it is to shoot it, We would have had to build this crazy <laughs> rig. It would have been yeah. this massive thing. Yeah. Shooting in snow is just really difficult. Yeah. And now you could take a Fusion and basically go self-film a day out in the yeah. back country well, the and fusion, it'd be a ton of fun. The Fusion's very cool too because you get this, it's like a floating ball feel because you can even skip, move the view around mm -hmm. from after it's been filmed. I think the video we're about to show actually is a, a seven on the front and then a fusion on Carl's head and then Ron's running a, the GoPro drone. So it's just amazing what we're able to capture in the backcountry in the right. middle of nowhere with, with, with three With a karma, cameras. a fusion. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, and it's so hard to shoot in the snow, it really is, but the GoPro with a couple of these POV mounts and a drone has just made it's so you can make these incredible edits really easy. So this is a GoPro only edit of that day out with, with Carl. Yeah, it's a short edit. We were just in this really nice power field and a burn, so it's a, a forest that got burnt out. We're out in the Eagle Pass area, which is near Revelstoke. And uh, it's just a one little run down through a powder field and it was uh, incredible. Anyway, cut to that. So I saw this on your Instagram and I was kind of jelly. It was like a really weird brag, but you guys found glacier ice and then made drinks with it. Yes. That's pretty cool. <laughs> like in a weird way. It's like, you know. Well, it, to me, like, uh, it's one of those random things that you're up in the British Columbia backcountry, these giant mountains, just stunningly beautiful. And there's glaciers. And I don't know that much about glaciers, but Carl says, hey, these make great ice for our nighttime adult drinks. So we ventured way out into the backcountry, up onto these mountains, looking down over Revelstoke. We got to this 
And this is at the end of the day, it's actually starting to get dark after we did this. We got to this glacier called Hanging Judge. Basically what happens with glaciers is they move, parts fall off, it snows. So you just go in and venture around and you find these chunks of ice sitting in the snow down below the glacier. So we found those, grabbed some rocks, I think rocks or shovels, and we were basically breaking up these bigger pieces of ice and putting them in the bags to bring back to the lodge to use for our drinks. Super rad, never, never knew this was a, a thing, but turned out to be very rad. Categorize that one under weird flex, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> So are you gonna go play with this thing this weekend? You guys are getting dumped on oh, right no, now. Yeah, we're getting dumped on. And you're right flying now. to Florida. Yeah, I'm flying to Florida tonight <laughs> for Thanksgiving with the uh, the wife's family. So hopefully when I get back, there's a lot more snow and we can start using this thing. Awesome. Have fun trying that, and you know, invite me out sometime. Just not like when I have to dig it out because it no looks frostbite. like a lot of work. No frostbite. no frostbite and no digging things out of creeks. Not into that. Cool. All right. Dude, don't don't leave me hanging. There we go. Boom. We're done. <laughs>